Welcome to the second installment of the C2 Assembly Introduction to MIPS. Main memory is one of the three components of a computer, and it's the component that stores the code and data for a program, while the, which the processor fetches and loads and stores in order to get data in and out of registers and to move instructions into the processor for execution. Memory is byte addressed, meaning that the indexes in memory are all numbers of bytes, each byte containing, of course, eight bits of data or instructions. In MIPS, memory is word aligned and big endian. Word is the size of an instruction in the processor. This is usually four or eight bytes, depending on the processor type. So the two-bit architecture, for example, uses four byte words, while a 64-bit processor uses eight byte words. Typically, the size of the word is matched to the size of the general purpose registers. Word alignment means that every memory address starts at a multiple of the word size. So in MIPS 32, every memory access has to start at a multiple of four. Big endian means that when you look at the order of the bytes in the word, the most significant byte starts at the smallest address in memory. The most significant byte being the bits that contribute to the larger portion of the value of the word. Alternatives to big endian include little endian and bi endian. As an example, let's consider storing the 32-bit hexadecimal value, shown here, 4A3B2C1D, into the memory at an address starting at hexadecimal 1000. In a big Indian architecture, the first byte of the word will be stored at the smaller address, the smaller address being the starting address. So here, the first byte is stored at the memory address starting the word, 0 x 1000. The first byte of the word is 4a. In hexadecimal, two characters of the hexadecimal value is a byte, because each character of hexadecimal is four bits, also called a nibble, half of a byte. So here, the hexadecimal values are stored as you look at the memory from smaller to larger, in the order uh, they appear in the word. So we have 4a at address 1000, 3b at address 1001, and so forth. In a little Indian architecture, so here 1d is stored at 1000, and then the next least significant byte, 2c, is stored at 1001, then 3b at 1002, and 4a at 1000. Let's consider now how arrays are laid out in memory. Arrays are put in memory in the order in which the array elements appear. So here's an integer array containing five elements declared in C and initialized to these values, 313, The address of A0 is the starting address of the array. This notation ampersand means address of in C language. So the address of the zeroth index of the array is the start of the array. So the zeroth value, 313, appears in the word starting at the address of the zeroth index of the array. The next word of the array starts at address of at the address of the zeroth index plus four. The plus four is because in the C language, in a 32-bit architecture, in the C language, the int type is a word-sized element, which means it's four bytes. Now, let's suppose that the start of the array A is in hexadecimal 1001000. That means that the address of the zeroth element of the array will be that number, 1001000. Thus we can replace 
our notation here with that number. And the zero with element starts at 1001, 0000. The next element starts at that number plus 4. And you can see that each subsequent word starts at 4 bytes offset from the previous 048C0. And depending on the endianness of the architecture, those 4 bytes may appear in different order within the word starting at the address. Let's consider array index 0, starting at the address 1001000. When we load and store the value there, we get 313. When we inspect the contents of the memory in hexadecimal in Big Indian, it's 00000139, where 139 in hexadecimal is equivalent to 313 in decimal. In a little Indian architecture, these last two nibbles, the last byte of the word in Big Indian, is swapped in the memory. So that byte containing the hexadecimal 39 would actually appear first at this address. Array index 1, starting at address 1001004, having the decimal contents of 78 when you load and store it would have a big Indian representation of 0000004E. And a little Indian representation, 4E000000. Index 2 is similar. Now we look at the hexadecimal of this relatively larger decimal number. These pairs of nibbles appears in the reverse order in the little Indian. Then comes down here on the most significant part of the little Indian representation. And then 2,0 appears over here, and 0F over here. Finally, the 0,0s zero on the end swap. So you can see how the big Indian and little Indian uh, are sort of mirrors of each other, but not exactly. And the last two elements in the array, the third and fourth indexes, are like so. There's not much new or interesting here to see. The memory instructions in MIPS are load word and store word. So load word to a register at the offset of the source register. This loads or reads a word of data into the destination register, the memory at the memory address calculated by adding the offset, which is an immediate value, to the source register. The store word instruction will copy the word from the source register out to memory at the memory address located at the offset plus the value read from the destination register. This type of a memory addressing scheme is sometimes called base plus offset, where the base is the register and the offset is the immediate value that gets added to the register. To specify a constant address value, you can use a base register of $0 in MIPS. Base plus offset is, if, is relatively efficient for the common programming practice of incrementing through an array. Here's an example of load word and store word instructions. Consider that the registers have been allocated so that the variables here declared as G, H, and array A are stored in $S1, $S2, and the base address of A0 is in $3. Then to calculate G equals H plus A3, we would first do load word into a temporary register, the value located at offset 12, which corresponds with array index 3. This is an integer array, and so the array index of 3 is 12 bytes from the start of the array. 
3 times 4 bytes per word. So we add 12 bytes to the base register address of $S3 that stores the base address of the array A. So now $T0 is equal to the value of array A, and we can add that value, array A3, to the register value of H in S2 and store it into S1. The next high-level language instruction is A4 equals H plus one. Here, we reread A3 and re-add it to H. These two instructions are actually redundant. In another future video, I'll discuss about removing these redundant instructions in order to save execution time. So the assignment of H plus A3 into A4 is accomplished by doing a store word of the calculated value of H plus A3 out to the index of 16 offset from the base address S3. Again, 16 is equal to 4 times 4 plus 16 bytes from the start of A is the location of A4. Here's another example. This time, we're not going to assume anything about the register allocation yet. So a five-element array A again, and we're going to calculate the summation of A0 plus A1 plus A2 plus A3 and store the result into A4. So the first thing to do is to get the address of A. In this, the LA instruction is provided by the assembler. It is a pseudo instruction, and you may use it. it. stands for load address. It gets the address of the label A associated with a variable into a register S3. So now S3 will equal the address of A. Now that we've got the address of A, the base address of A, we can now access elements of the, of the array A by offsetting from that base address. So the first thing to do is to get the value of A0. We get the value of A0 by adding 0 to the base address of A. 0 to the base address of A. The base address of A plus 0 is the element A0 of the array. The next load word instruction does a similar thing, but this time it's accessing the four byte offset from the base of A, which is the oneth element of A, because each element is four bytes, because an int type is four bytes long. Finally, add $t0, $t0, $t1, adds the previously loaded values of A0 and A1 into the register T0. Load the value of A2 from memory, put it into the T1 register, and then add T1 into the previously computed value that we have. So we're updating T0 by adding A2 to it. That gives us in T0 now the summation of A0, A1, and A2. And we need the value of A3. We get that by loading the right hand side of the expression here. Now that we've got the right hand side of the expression, we can store it into A4 using the store word instruction. So we store the calculated value in T0 into the fourth word. Really. Now let's talk about C structs. Struct is a, con is a concept in the C programming language for creating complex structures. Here we have a real, very simple structure, which contains two integer types that can be a fraction type to store a numerator and a denominator. We can declare a variable of the type struct fraction by saying struct fraction f. Somewhere in memory, storage for this f variable is allocated. The address of f, ampersand f, 
part of f is the numerator value because it appears first in the struct declaration. The word of f, f plus 4, contains the denominator. Again, this is because the integer types are 4 bytes. So they perfectly fit into the word aligned memory addresses. Structures in memory appear or are laid out in the order in which they are declared. The numerator field and the denominator field will appear in this order, numerator and then denominator in memory. Now when we declare this variable, we don't know where in memory it will sit, but we do know that if we, when we access the f variable, we can access the numerator and accessing f plus 4, the address of f plus 4, can access the denominator. Now we don't know what the values of the numerator and denominator are when we declare a structure. You cannot assume by default that C initializes variables to anything. So when you declare a variable, it's uninitialized, and you don't know what the value is. You can assign a value to a structure by using this dot notation, f dot denominator, which says the denominator field of f should be set to 20. Similarly, we can initialize the numerator, for example, to 10. In the MIPS assembly, this would be equivalent to having these instructions. Load address the T0 of F. So T0 is the base address of F. Initialize a register T1 to be 20. And then store the value of 20. Thus initializing the denominator field of F to be 20. Similarly, to initialize the numerator field to 10, we put a 10 into a register, and then we store the register containing the value 10 into the offset 0 from the address of f. Here we have the five element array from before and an instance of the struct fraction of array. The compiler could lay out the array before or after the struct. Here we show the array coming before the struct. The array starts at address 0x1001000, and the struct starts at uh, address 10010014. The first five words starting at the address 10010000 belong to the array A, and the next two words in memory belong to the struct F. Now let's see how the compiler would generate assembly code for the instructions initializing the array A and the struct F. Here I've rewritten the previous page, removing the declaration of the array and the struct, and, so, and compressing the initialization of the struct. So the first five lines of the assembly code here correspond with the initialization of the struct F with the denominator field of 20 and the numerator field set to 10. The first instruction loads the address of f into a register. The second instruction initializes a register to the value 20, and then the following instruction stores that value 20 into the location of the denominator field in the struct, which is 4 bytes offset from the beginning of the structure. The next instruction initializes the t1 register to 10, and then store word of that register of 10 out to the 0 offset from f initializes the numerator field to 10. The following instructions shown in blue are the same code from before, that summation of a0 through a3 storing into a4. The first step is to load the address of a into a register, and then load the values of a0 and a1. After that, add those values together, load an load in the value of a2 into a register and add that into the t0 that we're keeping the sum of. <clears throat> load in the value of a3 into a register. Again, remember, a3 is 3 times the element size of the array, which is 4 bytes, offset from the beginning. Add the value that we just read from a3 into the T0 register, and we've got the summation of the four elements of the array. 
store that value out to the 16-byte offset from the beginning of the array, which corresponds with the fourth index, or rather A4. That's everything today. I hope this has been illuminating.